Howdy guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Ben and in this video, I want to show you how you can customize Affinity Photo so that it best suits your workflow needs. So every once in a while, I'll get a comment on one of my videos saying, hey, my screen doesn't look like that or my layout looks totally different. And that's mainly because I've customized the layout in Affinity Photo so that I can work more effectively and efficiently for the kind of work that I do. So what I want to do in this video is show you all the different ways you can customize Affinity Photo and make it look and operate the way you want. All right, guys, welcome back. So let's just go ahead and jump right in and talk about the ways that you can customize Affinity Photo to better suit the kind of work that you do. I think the first place to start or a good place to start is going to be in the settings panel. So if we go up to Affinity Photo and we go to settings, we're going to have all the settings that we can adjust inside Affinity Photo. And I think a great place to start is going to be the user interface. When you click on that, you're going to see a few sliders and a few options we can adjust. So starting at the top, we have our background gray level, and this basically adjusts the color of our background canvas. So you can set this to your preference, but I will say, for example, for a long time, I always had it against a black background just because it was really easy for me to see my images and they kind of popped against the uh, dark background. So for example, in an image like this, where I have a portrait, it just really helped my image stand out and it was a bit easier on my eyes. But recently, now I'm going to go back to that settings by pressing command comma on my keyboard. I kind of enjoy having it at a bit more of a middle gray. And one of the main reasons for that is it helps me identify if there's any kind of color shift that I may not have been able to see as well when the background was black. So take this image, for example, against that black background, it looked fine. But now against this gray background, I can actually see that there is a little bit of a blue tint. I'm going to bring up that panel again, and let's just try to match the same kind of tonal value of that background. And then there you'll be able to see maybe a bit better that this background is not actually white. It's actually kind of blue. And so by having the background canvas color be a little bit closer to the background of my image, it's easier for me to identify that. Now, I purposely have a white balance adjustment on here kind of change. So if I go back and reset this, then now we can see, OK, now I can see that the background image is more neutral because it matches the color of that background. OK, uh, artboard background gray level. This doesn't seem to have any effect in Affinity Photo. When I looked it up, it talked about something when you're using designer documents. So this may not really have any real impact. Next is going to be your text contrast. This is basically the brightness level of the text. If you bring it all the way up, you'll notice the text gets a bit brighter. And if you bring it down, it's going to get a bit darker. So this is just going to be basically a preference. What's going to be easier on the eyes for you. Uh, the UI brightness this is going to be the brightness of all the tools and the menus. So you might want to have like a really high contrast. So dark tools, bright. This is a bit too contrasty for my eyes. So you're going to have to play around and find a contrast level that works for you. This uh, UI contrast default and high just kind of adjust the sliders, but you can obviously adjust them manually to find somewhere that you'd like. Uh, UI font size. I prefer large by default. Text is a little bit smaller. I like them a little bit bigger, maybe just getting older. I can really appreciate larger fonts on my monitor, even though I am using a 27 inch monitor UI style. I like the dark. Uh, I guess there is a light option. This just seems way too bright for me and it would make my eyes a bit too tired. So I prefer dark icon style. Uh, if you set it to mono, you'll notice all of the tools and icons basically just don't have any color. They're all monochromatic. I prefer a little bit of color. It helps me identify tools a bit easier. And tool tip delay, this is when you, you know, hover over a tool and then it tells you what that is. The tool tip delay basically adjusts the timing if you want it to come up faster or you want it to come up slower. That's not something I never really adjusted. And another thing to look at is actually here at the tools. A few other little options you can change are the tool handle size. So for example, let's go ahead and close this. Let me just go ahead and select this layer here. The tool handle size is going to be the size of these little handles here by default they're a bit smaller i guess you can make them smaller than that if you want but i prefer to have them large just because it's a bit easier to click on and grab if i need to 
Um, some of the other options I'm not going to really go through because a lot of them are self-explanatory and you'll be able to kind of quickly go through and figure out what's going to work for you. For example, I don't have mouse wheel to zoom because I'm always using a Wacom tablet and I use my left hand on the keyboard to zoom. And one more thing you can look at, but I'm not going to talk about in this video is shortcuts. Now, I did make a video a few years back talking about how I've customized a majority of the shortcut keys in Affinity Photo so that it works best for me, mainly because I have my left hand on my keyboard at all times while my right hand is using my Wacom tablet. And some of the default layouts in Affinity Photo just required my hand to move around the keyboard way too much. So I basically remapped a lot of the keys so that my hand basically stays in one position and I have access to all my tools and all my shortcuts without having to really move my hand too much. And it just speeds up my workflow in general. All right, let's go ahead and close this. Okay, so now that we got some of those settings out of the way, let's go ahead and look at the main screen. This is our main kind of work area. And so I went ahead and reset everything. So if you've opened up Affinity Photo for the first time, or if you've never made any kind of adjustments to these this area, your Affinity Photo will probably look like this. But if you've watched my other videos in the past, you may recognize that my Affinity Photo layout does look a bit different, again, because I've customized a lot of things. So one of the first things I think is useful to customize is going to be the tools here. So right now they're set here on the left, and I believe these are the default tools set to Affinity Photo, but you can, of course, customize these tools in a lot of different ways. So if we go up to the top and we go to View, we can come down here and say Customize Tools. So when we have this, now what we can do is we have all the tools available here and then we can drag them into the toolbar or we can drag out the ones that we don't use. So say for example, this is a group of dodge, burn, and sponge brush. I don't use that because I use my own method of dodging and burning. So I'm just gonna take that and drag it out and now it's gone. Of course, we can rearrange things, right? So for example, what is this? This is the undo brush tool, something I've never really used personally, so I don't use it. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Another cool option is you can actually set the number of columns. So you can set the number of columns up to eight, I guess. So I like two. So now I have two little columns here. I guess if you wanted to have more, you could have three. So again, this is going to be a preference. And you can, of course, rearrange things the way you like. Now, you'll notice that some of these tools have these little triangles. This is going to mean that it has more than one tool embedded. Let me go ahead and close this. So if I click on this little triangle, I have paintbrush, I have color replacement brush tool, I have the pixel tool. Now, if we go back to our customized tools here, you'll notice that we have this paintbrush with the triangle, which shows this is a group, but we also have the paintbrush by itself. So maybe for example, I'm never using the color replacement brush tool and I'm not using the pixel tool. I might drag that one out and just drag in the normal paintbrush. And then maybe if I do use the pixel tool, sometimes you'll see the pixel tool here by itself. So a lot of these things have that have groups, like for example, the uh, in painting brush tool, which I use all the time. This is a group of healing brush, patch, blemish removal, in painting brush and red eye removal. I don't want to use that many groups. So here I'm going to go ahead and take that group out and I'm just going to add in the in painting brush tool by itself. And the clone stamp tool, I'm going to move it next to it just so they're next to each other. It's a little easier for me to look at flood select tool, something I never use. I take it out and you see where I'm going with this. There's also some tools that are in here that are useful that don't appear by default. We've got a lot of filters here. I think there's even a frequency separation um, tool somewhere. There's a cat tool. I don't even know what that does <laughs> to be fair. Um, what does that do? I have no idea what this does. Okay, it makes a cat pretty random, but it's there if you want to. Uh, I don't see myself using that feature uh, anytime soon, but it's there. Another option you can do with the toolbar or the tools is you can kind of float it. So if I uncheck this dock tools, now the toolbar, you can kind of move it around and put it wherever you like. Uh, I do this sometimes because it does give me a little bit extra space. And sometimes when I'm working, say I'm doing some really close up work, you know, I want to have the toolbar just right off to the side. So it's really easy for me to access. Again, that's going to be a preference and something that you can kind of mess around with and see what you like. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and dock those tools again. Now, the next thing that can be adjusted is the toolbar at the top. And so if we go into this top area and right click, 
we'll have the option to customize the toolbar. And very similar to the tools on the left, there's a lot of different options that you can do. And you can basically drag these into certain spots and kind of just use the ones that you're going to like and use all the time. Maybe take out the ones you don't need. So right now, right off the bat, when I look at this, I have these auto features like auto colors, auto white balance, auto contrast and auto levels. You know, I'm not doing any of that because by the time my photo is moving into Affinity Photo, I've already adjusted this manually. So for me, I can just drag that whole thing out, make it disappear, but I might want to replace it with something else like uh, flip horizontal and flip vertical. These are options that I use pretty frequently, you know, especially with selections. I might want to, you know, flip a selection vertically or mirror it counterclockwise. Lots of different things you can do here. So definitely a good idea to uh, play around. And of course you can adjust things. You can add spacers, I think, to make room and stuff like that. So definitely very flexible to kind of set it up how you want to use it. Now, another thing people may have noticed too, is that I have tools or I have menus on the left side of my screen as well. And like I said, because a majority of my work is portrait style work where I'm looking at taller images, not landscape so much, for a lot of times, even though I'm zoomed in, I feel like I have a lot of wasted space here on the left. And so it's easier and more efficient for me to have tools on the left side as well, or I guess uh, menu items. So here you go to window and you can go to your studio. And here in studio, you can click show left studio and it's gonna pop up, let me go ahead and recenter this. It's gonna pop up with an area on the left. Now, right now, I think by default, it's just set to your macros. But the cool thing is, is that in case you didn't know, you can take any one of these little panels and you can drag them around to kind of customize them in a way that you like. And say, for example, I want this channels panel on the left side, I can click and drag it and I can move it over and I can put it in here or I can put it, I think maybe up where it gets blue to kind of create a new little stack, I guess. And then of course you can add as many tools as you want and just like before, you can remove tools you don't use. So, so for example, the navigator is something I never use. I'm going to go ahead and just drag that out, click on this little X and that'll get rid of that tool. Uh, transform is something that I don't use within the menu. So again, I'm going to drag that out and take it away. Uh, maybe the stock images. I like that here on the left side. I'm going to put it right here next to the macro so I can kind of quickly go back and forth. And then if you want to add more tools that you don't see on here, you can go to your window and here in your studio, you're going to have all the options of the different tools that can be shown. And if you've watched my previous video where I talk about using the vector scope and waveform monitor to help better assess the colors in your image, you can find that under scope. If I click on that, it's going to bring up the menu. And I think what it does, it just puts it in a maybe random spot or where it thinks it wants to go, but maybe I like it over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag it and put it there. Now, of course, you do have the option to work with that tool kind of floating in the menu, um, just kind of floating there if you like. Um, sometimes they can be adjusted. A lot of times they, it's actually kind of hard to grab the edge where that little arrow pops up. Yeah, so you can see you can adjust the size. This one can't really be adjusted the other way, I don't think. But there you can kind of put it wherever you like. And so for my work, I have a whole custom layout. So once you've adjusted all these tools, once you've found the studio tools you like, you got your panels and your toolbar and your tools the way you want, you can now save this preference so you can always go back to it. So you can come over here to your window and you can go to studio and you can add a preset and then you can name it whatever you want. So I have mine already called bin 2025. If I click on that, it's going to bring up my preset of tools that I always use. You can see here on the left side, I have my scopes, my channels, some of the basic info. I also have my library where I have all my custom macros. It's also saved my toolbar and pretty much everything, even at the top here, it's got all the options that I like to use. So it's a good idea to save at least one custom studio layout, but it's also useful to have maybe two or three, depending on the kind of work that you do. And so, of course, it took me a little bit of time to kind of figure out a layout that works best for me. Uh, just a lot of trial and error, trying menus in different spots, trying different settings, trying different layouts. And through working with Affinity Photo pretty regularly, you're going to start finding out what you use often, what you never use. And you'll slowly start streamlining your Affinity Photo experience so that it just works really good for you. 
and that's going to allow you just to work more efficiently in Affinity Photo. So um, hopefully this video wasn't too long. I always try to keep these videos short, but for whatever reason, they just seem to go on like forever. Uh, but anyways, that's just a quick little video showing you the different things you can do to kind of customize your Affinity Photo experience. Uh, okay, guys, well, that's going to be it for this. And uh, I guess I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.